G'day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the Hauer Superlight. Apologies if I sound absolutely shithouse. Uh, that's because I feel absolutely shithouse because I'm getting over a viral infection. So there'll be a lot of editing because we'll be editing out all the fucking coughing. So I've been looking at an ultralight rifle for a number of years. Went down the path of planning, you know, take a ticker action and get a carbon fiber stock. And, you know, I've got all these bloody spreadsheets with how much things weigh and whatever. I can never really get to where I was aiming to get to with what I could readily source. My plan was kind of, get as light as possible, like a new ultralight arms rifle that you probably would have seen on Ron Spomer's channel. Those rifles are really, really hard to get here in Australia, obviously because it's an American company, it's a very small company. It's been bought out by Wilson Combat, so maybe they're gonna start exporting them, but once again, I doubt it. That was kind of the path I was going down. I wanna have a rifle that's you know under two and a half kilos with everything included, which is kind of hard to do. And that is until the Hewa Superlight was released. So they've had the Hewa Carbon Stalker and the Carbon Elevator, I think is the other one. And they were about two and a half kilos or 2.8, I think for the biggest one. But then they came out with this one, which is advertised at 2.1 kilos for the entire rifle. Now I've weighed this one, and it's 2,162 grams. So it is 2.1 kilos, which is actually bloody ridiculous. I'll quickly go over what I want to do with this rifle. This pick rail is going to get fucked off because I hate pick rails. It's going to get tally uh, lightweight rings, and it's going to get a loopholed 3 to 9 by 40 uh, VX1 that I have in my cabinet of scopes because I have a lot of bloody scopes because um, that scope is 317 grams. The rings from Tally, I think off the top of my head, are about 50 or 60 grams. So this entire thing, all up from my maths, should work out to be uh, 2,480 grams um, with everything included. So that meets the benchmark of what I want to do. Now, this particular rifle is in 6.5 Creedmoor, and yes, I am disgusted in myself that I've bought a 6.5 Creedmoor. Never owned a 6.5 Creedmoor before in my life, but the only two caliber options they give you in this super light at the moment is 308 and 65 Creedmoor. Now I don't know which one of those two cartridges I hate the most. I've owned many, many 308s. I've never owned a 65 Creedmoor, so I went fuck it, I'll just buy the 65 Creedmoor because I would prefer to have this rifle in 7 mil 08, but they obviously don't make it. Um, so down the track, I can just whack another barrel on it. So if I want to make it 708, I can. But I'll shoot it as a Creedmoor for now, just because I've never owned one. And you can't really hate on something until you've actually used it. So let's just go over a quick rundown of this, of this rifle. Obviously, I'm not going to set it up now and whatever. There will be a proper review, but I just wanted to go over the rifle and my first impressions after getting it. Now, when you order this rifle, it actually gets shipped to your gun shop as a kit, and the kit is actually in parts. So you get the barreled action, you get the pick rail separate and you get the stocky stock separate and then the gun shop assembles it all for you. Now obviously the uh, gentleman over at Fat Rat Trading have put this together for me because that's how I ordered it through. Yeah, you don't have to do that as the customer, but um, just understand that it comes in a kit. So when you order it and you need to get them to go on the website and order it, um, it's the one that says it's a kit. That's how you get this particular rifle. I think with the next version up, the Carbon Stalker is the same barrel which will be in a minute of how thin that is. Um, it's the next size up in action. So this action is actually uh, a hybrid between the mini action, which is like the two to three size action. So two to three, 7.62 by 39, etc., And the normal 1500 action, which is like your 308, 708, 243, 65 Creedmoor, et cetera. This is slightly shorter, this portion here. So there it's slightly shorter um, and it's had a few other lightning cuts done on it to make it lighter. So this is the lightest action of a 308 size that you can get on the market. So let's start at the front. We have a half by 28 muzzle. Uh, has a nice little thread protector there. It's very, very thin. So I'll grab some calipers and measure that real quick. So that's 570 in Imperial in mil. That is 14 and a half mil. So that's actually a very thin profile. It is a 20 inch barrel. Um, so you do you do sacrifice a little bit in your ballistics to get that weight saving, but it's so short and light. Look at it. All right, let's the, the overall length. Let's get your measuring tape here. 
The overall length of the gun is 990 mil or three foot three inches. So this is the uh, stockies stock. Um, and there's a couple of little weird things like there's a bit of running paint just there, another little bit just there. Um, so it's carbon fiber, plain carbon fiber, but it's got this gray webbing over the top, which is actually quite nice because it gives you something to grip on. Normally just a plain carbon fiber uh, thing is not very good for grip. So like, I don't know, a hockey stick. A lot of hockey sticks are made out of carbon fiber and if they don't have the wrapping on them, they're pretty bloody uh, shit in the hand. So that's the same kind of thing. Now it's quite solid up at the forend, quite solid in the wrist, but then when you get to the butt, um, it's a bit hollow. So if you can hear that in the microphone. Um, it has, just pinching it, it has the tiniest bit of flex, but not a great deal. This could probably benefit from a little bit of um, spray foam on the inside, just to get rid of that noise, but we'll see how we go. It has a limb saver recoil pad. It's only a very thin one, but it's only 6.5 Creedmoor, so that doesn't really matter. Um, the magazine is their Howa proprietary magazine. Now, it's a three-round magazine. Um, the overall length of what you can fit inside is 2.857. So for cartridge overall length of 2.85, you only have 7 thou to play with. So when you stack the rounds in there, it does actually get quite tight. Now, it's a three-round single stack, However, it's slightly wider, so your rounds don't actually sit perfectly centered on top of each other. They kind of stack a little bit. So I'll whack some rounds in there just to show you that real quick. Now with the uh, magazine, you can't just push the rounds in from the top. Like a ticker mag, you'll put it in from the front like that. So with the mag in the gun, you would not be able to top feed with it. You can just see how they're slightly offset from each other. So it's not perfectly vertically stacked, but it is a vertically stacked mag. Now you can see how little room you have in there for the front of the cartridge. So if you wanted to hand load for this and you wanted to seat your bullets out further, you would have dramas um, because of the limitation of the magazine. So that's just something to keep aware of. Um, not really a big deal for a lot of people because a lot of people use factory and or when they hand load, they hand load to Sammy Spec, but just something I thought I'd point out. Um, the bolt has been lightened as well. So it's got a, you know, to have drilled a hole in there so keep it a little bit lighter. Um, now, it does have the zipper noise, so it sounds fucking gross. Um, that's because there's machining marks on the bolt itself. Not quite as bad as a Ruger American, but still pretty gross. That could get fixed up with uh, a bit of polishing and a bit of micro slick would fucking sort that right out. Everything else about the bolt is very just standard 1500. It's physically smaller in diameter than a normal bolt. So you would not be able to open that up for a Magnum if you wanted to, for whatever reason, buy one of these and get a gunsmith to put a short action Magnum on this. You wouldn't be able to because of the size of your bolt face. But yeah, as said, everything else about that bolt is essentially just a smaller version of a 1500 bolt. We have a three position safety. So forward for fire, uh, back one click is safe but you can run the action and all the way back locks the action. I do like that feature, being able to be locked on safe. That's why I like tickers. The, the center position, I mean, yeah, it, okay, I get it, but I've never really had a drama with having a gun on fire and lifting the bolt um, because I'm not retarded and I don't have my finger on the trigger when I lift the bolt. But that's just me. That's just how I've always used guns. Some people really like that feature. I don't really care for it. Um, all right, so the bottom metal is plastic. Now, some people really cringe when it comes to plastic bottom metal. I've never really had a drama with it. Uh, tickers have it. Ruger Americans, my Remington 783 has it. There's a few guns out there these days that have um, plastic bottom metal. It's, it's actually a pretty hard polymer. I can't even flex it by pushing on it. So, you know, it seems pretty durable. In the event that you drop this, uh, I think breaking the bottom metal is probably the least of your worries because more than likely if you drop this hard enough to break that, you're, it's not gonna be zeroed anymore. Um, and you've probably significantly damaged the stock as well. So it's not really a consideration for me. I like the fact that it's polymer because therefore it saves that weight. If you were to go to an aluminium bottom metal, you would add some of that weight back on. So I can definitely see why they've gone with polymer. And for me, I think that's perfect. Now I have seen other reviews saying that the stock 
themselves is a bit shit, particularly in the um, inlet. Now, since the gun shop put this together for me, I haven't seen under there, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna disassemble this rifle just so we can have a quick look on the inside of the stock inletting, just so we can see for ourselves and I will show you what I find. On first inspection, you can kind of see here um, that the action isn't really sitting down in the stock. Now, I think that's just how this stock is profiled. Um, but we'll see whether we can get that to sit down a little bit further. One thing you will also notice, well, I noticed anyway, is when you close the bolt, you can actually hear it touching the stock. So that knocking noise, is the bolt handle hitting the stock uh, and not the bolt handle coming down onto full rest on the action, which is where it's supposed to sit to be fully locked. Now it's probably not far off and there is a tiny leap in there I can see, which is probably where it's touching, so I wanted to get sanded down. But yeah, they shouldn't be touching the stock. Actually, before we pull it apart, I'll just really quickly test that trigger. Uh, it's a two-stage trigger, which I love two-stage triggers, so that's a really good feature for me. Um, I trigger pull gauge this at two and a half pounds for brake, but it's it feels like a heavy two and a half pounds. It's, just, it's not the crispest uh, trigger for me, but I'll probably end up playing with that anyway. It's definitely not a terrible trigger. It just seems like it's, yeah, it seems, it feels more to me like a four pound trigger than a two pound trigger. But we'll see what we can do when we lighten that down. So anyway, back to pulling this apart. That needs to get polished for sure. All right, it is a Torx, I'm gonna say Torx 30. Holy shit it is. All right, so Torx 30. Don't worry, YouTube manual moderators. I'm not showing me pulling this rifle apart, so you need not worry. All right, so there's our plastic bottom metal, barreled action, and our stock. This stock is ridiculously light. I'm gonna whack that on scars real quick because that's, <laughs> it's actually outrageous. All right, so this stock is 480 grams by itself. It doesn't look too bad. All right, so there's no aluminum pillars in it. That seems quite flat. Now, the, the, the video I did watch was um, hard antler hunting in New Zealand, and he said that this part in here was not flat and he was having bedding issues. That seems pretty fucking flat to me. That's as flat as flat can be. So maybe, and I think his video came out a fair few months ago, so maybe that was the original version of the Stocky Stocks ones. His one was also a different color, so who bloody knows. This one seems pretty good. All right, so let's put that back together. Getting that back in was as tight as 10 tight things. So while I've got this out of the stock, I'm just gonna fuck around the trigger now. They've got a, a big blob of silicon over the adjustment for the trigger. So I guess I'll pull all that off. They really don't want you adjusting that because there's a lot of silicon and shit in there, but we're going to anyway. So after fucking around with that for a while, it turns out that it's uh, silicon there for a reason and you can't get it lower than two pounds anyway. So, what are my final thoughts on this rifle? I think it fits my criteria quite well. It may not fit the criteria for you. You know, it's got a very light barrel, the whole thing's lightweight. Um, so, you know, it's not gonna be a very good target rifle. What it is good for is stomping up bloody big mountains um, and having a lightweight rifle. So, <clears throat> If that's what you're looking for, this might be the rifle for you. Now, there is going to be more videos, obviously. I'm going to go and shoot it and do a proper review on my actual thoughts, but I thought I would just give you a quick rundown since this is my first time proper looking at it, um, and I figured you guys might want to come along for the ride. So, I hope you got something out of that video. I will see you next time, and hooroo.